what's going on guys I'm back with another video today and uh, in this video I'll be talking about the ambient occlusion shader uh, so the ambient occlusion gives you these nice contact shadows on your models uh, so let me just model something real quick so I have uh, an example to show you so the ambient occlusion is not gonna work for anything that's flat so like if you just drop in a cube at a floor and nothing really is gonna happen so what I'm gonna do is model um, some indents on this object so let me just give it some beveling here. Um, maybe put this 10, make this cube editable, select the faces here, and uh, let's just uh, inner extrude like this. And then we can extrude inside like this. Also, let's zoom in a little bit. And then what I'm gonna do is uh, take the edges here on the inside. And also, let's take the edges on the outside and uh, bevel them as well. Because nothing in the real world has uh, the sharp edges like this. Uh, so beveling your edges, just even uh, 0 0.1, 0 0.2 uh, radius, really helps uh, to pop them, so like to make them look better. So make sure you bevel your, um, oops, make sure you bevel your uh, edges just a tiny bit. So let me just drop maybe two subdivisions in there. And yeah, that looks good. Let me just deselect. Also, let's uh, drop in the floor as well. So let's drop in the floor. Uh, raise this cube above the floor a little bit. And also, let's make uh, quick steps for this cube. So I'm just going to drop a plane like this. Uh, let's make this one by one when it comes to segments. And let's make this editable. I'm going to highlight all the edges and all I'm going to do is extrude down to make like a step and then I'm going to click T and extrude outwards and then I'm going to extrude down one more time make like a pedestal for this uh, cube and like I said before uh, all the edges just make sure you bubble them because it's going to look much better anyway and it's going to catch all kinds of highlights and stuff so let me just bubble these edges just a tiny bit. So I have a 2.8 2 offset. Anyway, so there's uh, two ways uh, to work with the ambient occlusion. So you have your ambient occlusions in your render settings. So you have your standard renderer or the physical renderer. Other engines have it as well. Uh, so if you add, if you go to effects, ambient occlusion. Uh, so this pretty much adds the contact shadows to your objects. Uh, so you have a few different options here. You have the color. I usually uh, keep this a default uh, because it kind of mimics the uh, shadows that come in from the lights and uh, global illumination and so on. Uh, so your minimum and maximum array depth is uh, the length of this uh, gradient. Uh, so the best the best way to show you this is uh, first let me just render this scene uh, without any uh, ambient occlusion. So let me just hit uh, render. And I'm rendering this on in the picture viewer. So as you can see, uh, we're not really getting any contact shadows. Or actually, we are getting contact shadows because I just activated the uh, ambient occlusion. So let me just do another one uh, without the ambient occlusion. And uh, give it another render so you can compare. So as you can see, uh, the before and after, uh, the gradient that you saw inside the ambient occlusion, that's exactly what it does. It stretches the uh, black and white gradient across all the uh, things that are close to each other. So like if you zoom in here, the cube and the uh, the pedestal is close. Uh, then we have these two edges that are close to uh, each other. And then we have the pedestal and the floor that are close to each other. So everything that has a 90 degree angle or anything that's close uh, and touching is going to give a nice uh, ambient occlusion and is going to give a nice gradient to it. Uh, so if you go back to the options here, usually what I do is uh, uh, for the black, I usually drop it to uh, a, like a darkish gray. So the effect is not really that uh, harsh. And also for the um, for the rate depth is pretty much, you know, how far the uh, gradient stretches. Uh, so if this object, let me just go to um, front view here and I pull out our tool. So let's do a uh, uh, thing we have, naming, 
oh yeah, the measuring tool. Uh, so this this measuring tool measures your objects. So as you can see, uh, this is uh, this cube is about 180, and uh, from uh, the top of the cube to the floor, we have about 330. Uh, so the uh, the minimum and maximum uh, rate depth that you see here, this is exactly how it works. Uh, so it calculates uh, all the things that are touching uh, depending on uh, how far or how close they are from each other. Uh, so we have, you know, for the cube, we have about 195. And then from the cube to the first step, we have about 30. And then from the cube all the way to the floor, we have about 150. So right now our minimum and maximum is 100 centimeters. Uh, so if you want this gradient to uh, be stretched more and kind of blend in more with your uh, shadows, you have to actually increase this number. So let's bump this up to 200 and give it another render. You will see that the gradient will be stretched out compared to uh, the previous uh, render. So let's just compare. So this is what we have now. Yeah, this is the first one. Uh, this is without the ambient occlusion, and this is with the ambient occlusion. As you can see, it really uh, stretches out those uh, lights and uh, darks, and it makes it more uh, uh, more darker, I would say, and uh, more like uh, pronounced. Uh, before, you couldn't see it as much. Uh, so if I uh, do it again and drop the number, so right now I have 200, let's do 50. Oops. Let's do 50. And give it another render so you can compare 200 to 50. So as you can see before, the shadows really stretch and uh, go outwards. It really uh, gives a nice depth to our scene. And this is the same thing with 50. It's really a uh, really small effect. It's still there. Like if you compare it with no ambient occlusion, nothing's there. Uh, this is with the uh, 200. And this is with 50. So depending uh, what kind of look you're going for, uh, the rate depth, uh, that you see here is pretty much the distance that you want the gradient to stretch. Uh, so all I did is uh, drop the black to like uh, darker gray and also uh, played around with the rate depth. Uh, so let's put it back to 200 and uh, drop the uh, uh, the gray even uh, lighter so it's going to give a, a nice and uh, gradual effect. You're not going to see it as much uh, but still there. Uh, so dispersion is kind of like uh, how pronounced do you want it to be in your scene? So right now it's 100%. Uh, so let's give it a render. And uh, so this is what we have now with the light, lighter gray. So as you can see, it's really a uh, small effect. And now uh, let's put the dispersion down to uh, maybe let's try 25% and now uh, give it a render and see what it looks like. So as you can see, uh, the effect gets really harsh and uh, it kind of disappears. And you only get this, uh, uh, like um, the shadows on the inside and uh, the gradient is kind of gone. Uh, so what you have to do is obviously play around with the dispersion number. So let's try maybe uh, 70 to get a different effect. But this version pretty much uh, just clips your gradient. Uh, so let's just compare. As you can see, uh, the with the 80% or the 70% that we set, uh, it's obviously more pronounced than before. So this is from before, but it was 100%. Uh, this is 25%. The gradient is almost gone. It's still there. Like you can see around the contact shadows, like it's kind of harsh. And then this is uh, the 85 or the 75%. It just uh, took back the gradient a little bit, and uh, it's not as pronounced as before. So your dispersion is kind of like uh, controlling how far uh, and how pronounced it is uh, in your scene. So you can play around with this option. And uh, the contrast is uh, you know, pretty much making it darker or lighter. Uh, so right now it's zero, so let's uh, crank this up to 100% so you can see the difference right away. So let me just give it a render. As you can see, um, the darks got really darker and the lights got really lighter as well. So if you compare the two, so with the contrast, it really bumps up the uh, levels or the uh, darkness and lights in your scene. So sometimes if uh, you really want to 
you know, tweak uh, the look of ambient occlusion, the contrast can be useful. You can bump this up a little bit, especially because I dropped the color black in here to lighter gray. If it's too light for you, you can always bump up the contrast to maybe 10% and then, um, you know, give it a render. As you can see, uh, kind of everything gets darker, but at the same time, it looks pretty good. Uh, so this uh, this effect inside the render settings is global, so it affects all your objects. Uh, but you can do the same thing. So if I turn this off, I can do the same thing inside the materials. So if you go inside your material and for color, you do uh, for your texture, you do effects, ambient occlusion, and inside the ambient occlusion, um, let's just do let's keep everything the same. Let's just bump up the contrast a little bit so we can see it better. And also drop the um, the black to lighter gray. Now we can just apply this to our uh, cube. Let me go back to perspective view, and uh, let's give it a render. See what it looks like. Uh, so as you can see, the ambient occlusion is only affecting the cube. So you can control um, uh, like where the ambient occlusion is landing. And also, what you can do. See right now, we're getting ambient occlusion on the floor a little bit, or on the pedestal. So what you can do inside the options for uh, ambient occlusion, oops, let's go in here. Uh, you can uh, do self-shadowing only. Uh, so what it does is pretty much, it's going to ignore everything around the cube. And it's only going to give ambient occlusion on top of um, the material only for the cube. Uh, so if you give another render, as you can see, we lost uh, the ambient occlusion under the cube because we ticked on the self-shadowing. So this is the before and after, as you can see. Uh, so ambient occlusion is really useful. You can do all kinds of different things. Uh, so another example is uh, you can use it as a mask. So what you would do is uh, create a layer inside uh, the uh, texture uh, plug here. And uh, let me just add, for example, two colors. So let me just do like a dark blue. And then we're going to add uh, another color here. So I'm drop this under. And let's make this uh, light blue, like this. And ambient occlusion is going to be our mask. So if you change it here in the preview of your um, material, nothing's going to happen. Uh, but you will see it here. So let me just give it a render. As you can see, the ambient occlusion is actually uh, acting as a mask, getting that dark blue. And then ambient occlusion as uh, masking uh, all the dark blue and then putting in uh, the light blue in there as well. Uh, so if you want to get a nicer look, you probably have to get these two colors uh, closer to each other. Right now it's like a big, uh, big, big difference. So let me just copy this. Uh, go back to our second color and paste. And now let's just change this color just a tiny bit lighter. So maybe like this. So it's a really small effect. And now what you can do, let me just give another render. So as you can see, we're getting like a nice little glow effect. So compared to before, as you can see, it kind of blends right in there and uh, gives like a glow effect with two different colors. It gives us a nice little gradient. Uh, so you can use this uh, ambient occlusion as, um, uh, you know, like a mask. You can use it inside any channel. You can use it inside the, Luminous channel. If you use it inside the luminous channel, uh, make sure you inside the options here. Uh, where is it? Yeah, inside the ambient occlusion options, make sure you have the um, a use sky environment. So what it does, if you have a sky, so let's just add a sky, and you create another material, and uh, let's just make this uh, luminous material 100%. Drop it on top of the sky, and for this material, let's just undo the masking. So let's do clear, let's keep this white, and the ambient occlusion will go inside the luminous channel. So let's just add effects, ambient occlusion, and then inside the ambient occlusion, make sure your sky environment is checked on, and now let's give it a render. So as you can see, uh, the sky uh, that we uh, put on there is affecting the ambient occlusion.
Uh, so there's you know a whole bunch of different options you can play around with. Uh, but I usually stick to the basics. Uh, another thing about ABA inclusion you can do, so let me just delete these two materials and create a new one. So you can use it inside the uh, alpha channel, which gives you like a pretty cool result. So let me drop the ABA inclusion in there and uh, drop it on top of the uh, cube here. I'll give it another render. I think I have to turn off the uh, sky option here. So let me just undo that. And actually, let me turn off the ambient occlusion all around. And we can delete this sky in order to see the this effect that I just did. So let me just, the alpha is on, color is on, okay. Let me just give it another render. So as you can see, it kind of uh, starts, um, the cube starts getting transparent. So if I bump up the um, the length of the ambient occlusion, the maximum ray length, to about maybe 400. It's really going to start masking out that cube even more. So as you can see, we can see the other edge of the cube. Um, just do even more. And let's get the contrast even more. And also... Maybe let's try let's try inverted. I think the inverted is gonna give us a better look. Yeah, now as you can see, uh, some of the cube is getting transparent. So you can uh, use ambient occlusion as your alpha channel as well. Obviously, right now I'm not getting any nice results. Uh, but if you play around with the options, you can um, make your cube look uh, almost like a transparent. Uh, if you uh, play around with the colors and uh, the dispersion length and so on. Uh, but anyway guys, hopefully this video helped you. Uh, so there's uh, all kinds of different options you have for the ambient occlusion. Uh, but the basics, if you stick to the basics, uh, you have your uh, color. Obviously you can do any color you want, but you just keep it to black and white to make it look realistic. Uh, then you have your maximum and uh, minimum rate depth. Uh, this is just how far uh, the, um, the gradient stretches. So if your object is 100, uh, the default option should work easily. If your object is 300 and so on, just make sure you increase the maximum rate depth. Uh, dispersion is just, uh, it's kind of like expanding or contracting uh, contracting the uh, uh, the effect. So if you want to like clip the effect uh, 50%, then you would just set this to about 50 and uh, it's not going to be as pronounced. Uh, the contrast is obviously, uh, you know, kind of like multiply the effect on top of each other and make it darker or lighter. Uh, then you have self-shadowing option, which is like ignore everything around it and just um, uh, have uh, this material and the ambient occlusion work only on this object. So the ambient occlusion is going to be applied only on one object with that material. Everything else can be ignored. Uh, so that's self-shadowing. And uh, also, if you want to, you know, uh, control the um, the quality of your ambient occlusion inside the physical tab, you have. Um, uh, as you can see uh, right here, ambient occlusion subdivisions, uh, max is 2. Uh, so if you see any noise in your render, you can always bump this up to about 3 or 4. I wouldn't go even any higher. And uh, it, it will give you a nice and clean result when it comes to ambient occlusion uh, noise. Uh, but anyway, guys, hopefully this video helped you. Uh, a little quick video on ambient occlusion. Uh, please leave a little like, subscribe to my channel, and uh, I will see you in the next video, guys. Uh, have a good day.